On February 23, 1987, astronomer Ian Shelton looked at a new image of the dwarf galaxy called the Large Magellanic Cloud and saw a bright star that wasn't supposed to be there. About three hours earlier, a blast of neutrinos had peppered detectors on Earth, the first signs that a titanic detonation had taken place, literally splattering a supergiant star's internal anatomy across space. Now, the newly upgraded Hubble Space Telescope has captured data allowing astronomers to watch what happens in this, the aftermath of one of nature's biggest explosions. We're just now witnessing events that actually unfolded about 168,000 years ago. What we're seeing is the collision of the fast-moving guts of the supernova with a ring of dense matter blown off by the star's progenitor about 20,000 years ago, when it was a red giant. That progenitor, named Sanduliac 69202a, was born 11 million years ago. At about the same time, the branch of apes that would one day become human beings emerged. About 700,000 years ago, around the time the first pre-humans walked erect in Africa, the star burned through the last of the hydrogen in its core. Perhaps 45,000 years ago, in the time of our species, Homo sapiens, the star exhausted its core helium and began fusing higher and higher order elements. It got to neon in 1971, oxygen in 1983, silicon in February of 1987, and just 10 days later, it hit the wall of physics. When it tries to fuse iron in its core, a star must die catastrophically. As for what became of the star itself, there are three possibilities. It may now be a neutron star, but so veiled by thick dust clouds that human technology cannot see it. It may have become a black hole, or it might be the first observed example of an exotic species whose matter has degenerated beyond normal matter, a quark star. Keeping watch on this expanding shock front may give astrophysicists the clues they need to answer just which legacy Supernova 1987A has left behind. For Space.com, I'm Dave Brody.